me and put me up on social media, it's not going to happen. Shaka, what's up? What are What are you doing over there? This, I'm just doing a water fast. So I'm just cleaning this Oh, you doing a water up. fast? Me yeah, too. I do it every week. Me too. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. One one day I'll one day I'll get you right. You'll be doing you fast and everything. Right. You're gonna get me right. Did I tell you I went vegan? You're vegan now? Yeah. It's been one day, but I'm vegan. It's it's you been how long? One day, twenty four hours. 25 hours. Let's, let's bump that up to 25 hours. How long is it going to last? However, whenever, how long to last? If Dr. Sebi come to me tonight and you need, to, you need to be vegan for a year, then a year it is. What's up, Shaka? What's going on? Right. What's going on with your internet? Where are you at? In the cave? Where you at, Shaka? No, it usually worked good. They just censor me. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back again. Oh my gosh. All right, Shaka. All right. Him and his internet. We're gonna wait for him. We're gonna wait for him, okay guys? You know, sometimes they be in the caves when they come on live. <laughs> in the Caucasus Mountains or some shit. Like, sir, where are you? I am vegan. 24 hours. I'm very proud of myself. It's a big accomplishment. Let's see if he's back on here. I've been eating grass all day. Kale. I'm even thinking of doing some um, chicken sandwiches with cauliflower. Okay, we're going to wait for shock. Hopefully his internet is sorted out now. Okay, great. Let's request him. Let's see. Caulifla cauliflower isn't vegan enough? Well, damn. All right, I'm going to eat bush. Is that better? Sprinkle it with some water as dressing. Shaka. Okay, he's coming back. Great. Uh -huh. Can you hear me? Is that, is that better or not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of, you see that? You made me drop my phone. What kind of question is that? Also, your microphone is not like you. Your microphone. Oh, you can't hear me? Oh, my God. Uh, uh, okay. They fresh. Right. Talking about my curtains. My curtains is luxury. When am I coming to New York? Yes. What when are you coming? When are you going to Ghana? I'm not going to no damn New York. I'm going to Ghana when you go to Ghana. All right. Well, then that's soon. Let me know when you do so I could book my ticket. I'm going with you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me know when you are going to Ghana so I can go with you. I mean, I swear I've been gone enough times you never forward. Because you never invited me. Bruh. I've got to invite you home. You're supposed to invite me. I'm a Capricorn just like you. You know how we move. I never got no invite. I just went. Well, I'm going with you the next time you come. Let me go pat my bag. Hold on. Give me a second. <laughs> yeah. 
you two fool. Yo, what am to your brethren? Six nine. Who who named that? The only six nine your I brethren. know is the one in the bedroom. Who me? The skittle nah. man. Your brethren. Nah. The skittle man. Yo, why is he? Why is he? Why is he gonna snitch on Cardi for? Who? That boy, they snitch on Cardi as well. He snitch on everybody, but he even snitch on Cardi B. Really? Well, that's for people. In the court, in the court, it said that she was a member of a gang. <laughs> I thought that was known already. I don't know, but there's a reason why he's the first person on Instagram Live to get to two million because he's a little snitch. <laughs> and well, he, he, people celebrate you know, snitching these days. The streets is a myth. Nah, well, I don't know. I come from a generation where they can farm off your dead. Oh, all right. Oh, okay, Shaka. Big man Shaka. That's how you feel, snitches. Boy. Mm. Yeah, I don't understand. This thing is moving mad. For real. Shaka, you high? You high right now? Shaka, I think Shaka is high. Isn't he giving y'all a little bit of high vibes? I think he's flying tonight. I'm on Earth. He's somewhere in Mars and some shit. Shaka, sort out your internet so you can come back. We got shit to talk about. Who child? It's not my internet, boo. You see my internet working here. It's not my internet. <clears throat> Is Shaka's internet. Two Capricorns on one live is it's a lot for Instagram. I get it. It's too much. I'm blurry for real. Oh my gosh. Yeah, blurry. It's your internet. It's my internet. Is it better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, great. Oops. You can't just rest up your phone. Better? Yeah. Shaka, what's going on with you? You seem very calm today. Because I'm doing a water fast. Okay, I need to drink more water then, because I need to be calm like that. Oh. Oh. Look, my head wrap even came off. Now I got to fix my head wrap. It's about. Talk to the people. It's about. You see my head wrap came off? It's because it's of about the past only... six nine. He did this. <laughs> he it's about on. only water. You understand? Huh? Sometimes you have to give your organs a rest. So... It's good to just drink water. Yeah, I've been I've been drinking water all week, but I just needed a little bit of um, champagne. It only have what five percent of li liquor in it, anyway. So, no, I don't mean like that. I mean like you should give yourself dedicated times where you just drink only water, not drink more. Yeah, that's what I... Just. Oh, you mean no food? Hmm. Uh -huh. You see how skinny I am? I need food. You don't. You see. You don't. You don't need. No, you need to work out more. That's what you need to do. I work out my mouth all of the time. Doesn't that count? No. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna do push-ups after this. See? Because I'm not skinny, but I'm also 
every week I'm I'm doing 36 hours of just water fast. Okay, I'm gonna try that tomorrow. No, wait till Sunday and join us then next Sunday. Okay, I think I could do that. Let me eat all of my chicken in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Just get this out of the way. So, what are you saying? You feel like um, it's black people that create the phenomena that allowed this informative culture yes. vote? Do you disagree or agree? Mm, I think it's uh, I think <laughs> it's difficult to say just us. I think it's a, a conspiracy with the Zionist Jewish record label owners, mm -hmm. the media. Okay and us as well as rich little white who like to hear white people say nigger all the time i agree i agree with that as well um yes i agree with that as well but i think also again as black people we don't have to entertain everything so we know that certain things are out of our control, but the mm. fact that we still support and push certain things is yeah. why we need to start taking accountability. Mm. Well, look, we shut down into Australia. She can't get a rap show no more anywhere. So Who? Iggy Azalea? Igloo Australia. Oh, that lady. Oh. Yeah, she got shut down, but I mean, it wasn't us that was trying to push her to say that she was anything to listen to. It was the record label execs. They was promoting her saying that she's the hottest thing. We weren't saying that she was the hottest thing in the hood because in the hood, like Remy Ma and Nicki was the hottest thing, not her. That was never that work. This guy is like, there's actually black people who are in the hood playing his music. And like doing TikTok video and all kind of thing to his music. And when I look, who, who gave who gave the hood pass? And why are they being handed out? So, like, I feel like we need we need better hood gatekeepers and hood ambassadors. Hmm. Anyway, the other thing that we can talk yeah. about is. Mm -hmm. Did you go for a jog? If I went for a jog? Did you go for a jog when the brother get killed? Did you go for a jog? I didn't. No, I didn't either. Because why didn't you go for a jog? Why? Because it's like we literally know that we came from a civilization on civilization that built mm -hmm. the foundation of human civilization. In them times there, when people come down and try to killers and fighters you think that we're saying hands up don't shoot and going for a fucking jog <laughs> well i think the jog is just in, in solidarity for this man's um interest for his predilection not yeah, so but much i didn't see it as protesting all right so now we're in solidarity and then what well that you see that's the second part what do you think is the solution I think that this, the solution is a economic interdependence from Europeans forever and Chinese and Koreans and Indians. But seeing as we don't want to do business with each other and um, every time one of our people rise up out of the hood, they go and be the brown faces, the black right. faces of white capitalism. I feel like right. that is something that is perpetuated because... Did you see the woman? She's like 20. Uh, her name is, I can't remember her name, but she has a, a, a cosmetic company called Moon, Moon Cosmetics. And she made a million dollars in eight minutes as a vegan cosmetic company. Wow. And she's 20. Never but to heard do that, of her. You have a whole heap of women with, you know, eight and 20 times more followers than she. And all they can do is is take picture of themselves for Fashion Nova. You have a whole heap of man, and all they can do is take picture of themselves next to a Mercedes to promote Mercedes, you understand? That's the problem, is like, rather than do the work and create and establish our own companies, we right. rather somebody else do the work. I think 
on a basic level, we first as a people have to get that psychological and spiritual blockage out of the way before we can talk about like economics and nation building on that kind of level and systems and structure we have to get what you said the trust part we don't trust ourselves and not only mm. when it comes to business we can talk about black men and black women and our dynamics and so many different examples on just like a macro level of us not trusting each other like mm. there are people who would rather buy this bottle let's let's say this this pen this same pen from a white person versus a black person because in their head this pen that is sold from this black person isn't the same quality or mm -hmm. they're going to look for some kind of reason as to why oh i can't support black businesses so from we first have to start with from the basic level like we don't have a code we don't have a con code of ethics and a code of living amongst ourselves and so we have to get over that part before we can even start talking about like build like community building and buying black and circulating the money back into the community. Like that's the basic part of it. Once we, we get over that that hill, then we could start talking about trading and being our own manufacturers and all of that other shit. Until then, we just we just talk it. How do we get the code back? Because we did have a code. That's what built Black Wall Street. That's what built Marcus Garvey. Them type of thing there. They they was based on code and rules and, you know, an actual group economics. I think, well, for me, the way I look at life is that, especially if you have a platform, these are conversations that you need to have. Because sometimes, like, our people aren't even aware of the things that they're doing because it's so ingrained in your subconscious mind that you're just moving a certain way because that's how you've been programmed to kind of think. So I think the more we have conversations, and also, if Black people see other pl Black people doing that, the best way to teach anyone is by modeling, is by you, Shaka Bars, supporting Black businesses. Me, Empress A.K. Ali, supporting Black businesses. That's how I feel like over time. But yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> that's that's what I think. Um, action. I'm in the stage of action. Like if you notice, I don't in even make no AK facts video. I didn't make one since January because I'm in the action phase of my life right now. I'm tired of talk. <laughs> well, I as well. That's why I came. Thailand so I could get away from everything so I could be a better businessman, you know? I hear that. I hear that. Mm. And also sharing information with your people. Some people, like, I don't know what it is, but it's this idea that only I could win. Like, another fly sister out there who rocks head wraps can't win. Or another brother mm. out there who eats fruits can't win. Like, I want to be on top. I think once we replace individualism with collectivism, then mm -hmm. we would move somewhere. But everybody's all about me, 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 me. Even on social media with these pro-black influencers, it's always about me, 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 me. But how are you using what you know to help your other brothers and sisters out? Like if mm -hmm. someone hit me up right now and like, Empress, I want to start a business. It takes five minutes to give you like a beginner's crash course. Like, why can't we, why is it that we have this platform and people can't come to us and be like, oh, Ali, I want to know about this. I want to know about that. Like, we don't want to share the information for some selfish reason. And it's like, that's counterproductive. Well, I feel like it's getting over the idea that there's only enough food for you or there's only enough food for me. There's enough food for everybody to eat. Yeah. Um, I, I, I figure that uh, it's breaking intergenerational curses because there's enough of our people who, when they make money, they get a Jewish accountant. They, you know, <laughs> buy from the Indian people. They bank with Chase or whatever. And, you know, there's a black bank. There's a black lawyer. And um, there's a black accountant. But it's like, I think... The other thing is, and this is the thing that I don't think we're critical enough of because we have this uh, 
this idolism, this we deify people who've had the rags to riches story. And I think Americans are really good at it, um, of telling how, you know, they came from the slum, they came from the get on it's like go to Congo and see a real slum. Tell me about Harlem is a slum. It was, but it's not now compared to a certain place I've been to in Kenya and Somalia, Ethiopia. And it's like, when you start to realize that actually your story isn't the most important story. It's our story is the most important story, but not one story is the most important story. And we've had our music glorify this rags to riches story all the time because it's like, John Henry Clark said is African history didn't start with, with, with slavery. Slavery interrupted African history, you know? And when we look at slavery as the starting point, then everything after that is going to seem like it's a success, right? Whereas we look at, you know, Mansa Musa, or we look at Kemet, Kush, Abyssinia as our starting point or not mm -hmm. maybe starting point but a point to start from then it means that we have a lot of work to do it's not like yeah rick ross made some money and everybody's gonna start jumping around because it's like he made some money for who by doing what for who and what does he own he owns some chicken shop or something it's like <laughs> we used to own i used to have people that own entire cities and countries mm -hmm. and i think fig i figure that actually um when you really look at it on the surface uh, it can seem like these people are successful. But mm -hmm. really, uh, I was speaking with the Prime Minister of Barbados when we went to Ghana, and um, I was part of the delegation that took her there for the first time. She'd never been there before, and she created a bilateral trade agreement between Ghana and between Barbados. And uh, when she, 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 had, she made a point of introducing me to Rihanna. Like she made a point, like, have to introduce you to Rihanna. And she said, yo, this is one of the most influential black people in the world. And afterwards, I asked her why she said that. And she said, because you have a platform and you only use it for black people. And no, no famous black people really do that. They use it to make white people money. Mm -hmm. And you use it only to influence knowledge, health and consciousness purely for black people and you're not owned by anybody. And she's like, no other bl black celebrities do that. And it's like, every time any of our people get a platform, they start shucking and jiving and dancing on tables like Bobby Shmurda. And it makes no sense. It <laughs> gives away. I want to go back to something that you said when it comes to like comparing the slums in let's say Ghana, I wasn't sure if it was Ghana that you said versus in Harlem. Come I want to be devil's advocate with that, okay? Because I don't like the idea of saying, well, oh, it's harder for black people in one place than the other. I think it's important to kind of like acknowledge each person's experience while at the same time kind of striving for collectivism. And I feel the same way, side note, when it comes to individual movements, you know, of black people across the diaspora. Like I support black Americans and the ADOS movement, as long as it's not one that is causing schism or there's the superiority complex. So I am all for um, black people embracing and kind of walking in their truth in their own individual experience while also thinking about the greater good of black people across the world. So if that makes sense. I really wanted to say that because I think sometimes we kind of like downplay black people in Harlem or like black people in Brooklyn. Like, okay, it wasn't as hard as in Africa, but it was still hard for them, if that makes sense. Just yeah, I mean, everybody's experience is subjective and I entirely get That's that. True. But most people in the West are not thinking about what's going on in Brazil. Like, if, if Black Lives Matter, for instance, really was in solidarity with Black people everywhere, mm -hmm. then the way that they, the narrative that they create about what's going on where they live would also be inclusive of the narrative that's going on where the Brazilians are, where the Congolese I are. Agree. But it's not like in Jamaica, 
If you want to talk about gunshot, Jamaica is in the USA is 42 people out of every 100,000 people are murdered. In Jamaica, it's 58. And Jamaica's a tiny little island in comparison. But what, what I'm not saying to, to marginalize or downplay people's okay. experience where they're at in Baltimore or wherever, Chicago, because it's real there, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time, because of the way that America is an empire and all of the Yankee them think that their experience is the most important experience that exists because we have been framed as black America and then the rest of the black world. That's how right. the black experience has been framed. Even why am I in school in England getting taught about Martin Luther King, but I don't get taught about the same movements that existed in, in Africa, in South Africa, in, um, uh, in Europe even, because there was a, a, the, 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 the Montgomery bus boycott in the USA. In the England, there was a thing called the Bristol, boycott, Bristol bus boycott, and they did the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And they was beaten down by white racists. And there was people that was killed, but I'm not getting taught about their story. And I think it's, right. and get absorbed by the American story as mm -hmm. the entire black experience. And I've been, to North America. In fact, I've been to New York and I went to, uh, 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 it was like a sharing of, 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 of experiences and we were supposed to build off the back of it. And I took Lenny Kravitz down there to, to reason with these people then. And I realized that the HBCU people then think that they are the be all and end all of life and success. <laughs> and and this is why I always encourage people to travel. And even if you can't travel, and I made an AK Facts video about this um, last year, where I was saying, like, even if you can't travel, you have the internet. Like, technology mm. is here. You can literally reach out to a black person in Brazil, or a black person in DR, or a black person in Trinidad, and have mm. these conversations, and get different perspectives. But again, when you live in your own world, and your, your box, like I always say, like, the world is bigger than your hood. Like, there's, there's, there's so much more. And I think people, now is the time for people to travel. Now is the time for people to step outside of their comfort zone. Outside of their comfort zone. And mingle with Black people across the globe. Like, we have a lot in common and a lot of unique experiences. But I can't really fault some African Americans because they've never been outside of America. Like, America's a big place. Like, you could go to Florida, you could go to this place, you could go to that place. So I, I get it. But again, I think just educating people and just letting them know, like, yo, you know they do shit differently in this place, right? Like, <laughs> like I think that needs to be the push. Like, open up your mind just a, just a little bit more. And it's the same mm. for Caribbean people, too, because in the Caribbean, we think that, like, sure, we watch TV and we hear about America and England and Canada. But again, there's some Caribbean people who are stuck in their own box. And it's like, trust and believe, like, the world is bigger than St. Vincent or bigger than Barbados or whatever the case may be. So I think that's what we need to start doing is just, like, push this idea, like, hey, do you want to book a flight to such and such? Go. Mm. Don't go on a resort either. Go go around the local people them. Mm, but at least with the Caribbean, we have, in the Caribbean, we have a Pan-African curriculum. So we have the capacity to intellectualize other people's experiences. And okay. when, we, when we don't do that, and we feel like, you know, Brazil is all it is, or London is all it is, or Kinshasa is all it is, then what we do is we, we, we divide our power because our power is in solidarity with all of our suffering everywhere mm -hmm. and all of everywhere. Like, it's only now it's been normalized for black people to celebrate other black people winning. Well, we're also losing as well. And at the same time, for instance, in, in uh, 2017, when there was like 700 odd black people who were unarmed, killed by the police in North America, in 2017, there was 982 people killed in Brazil, just in Rio, not in the rest of Brazil. So the experience for the black Brazilians is like, you know, at least 
10 times worse based on just just on the numbers on the figures right. and one of the other problems is language there's not enough things that we're translating into other languages like sometimes i get people to translate what i'm what i'm saying right. into their language and put it in their language sometimes i i will post a post and the whole post will be in somali or it will be in ethiopian or it will be in french and a lot of the time people don't look at that because my audience is mainly english right but there's a lot that gets lost when we don't actually go to meet people where they are we're just like I that agree. contact you know? i agree with that i like that i like that idea of meeting people where they where they are whether it's physically traveling or just like just on a connection level as a human being meeting them where they're at mm. but the, the whole if you can have straps in america that you have a legal right to carry a strap and you don't arm yourself right now when all of the european them are arming themselves then you're a fool if you have a if you can legally carry a strap because what's going on right now in the government and everything and they're gonna this have you heard of the bill hr6666 it's just going oh, through that? all right so this bill basically means that they can come to your yard test you for corona and if they see or think you have any symptoms of it without a test proving positive they can drag you out of your yard and take you off to quarantine or they can do that to your picnic and take you off to quarantine so if you meet that experience and you don't have a strap, boy. <laughs> what about people in New York who can't carry straps? <laughs> boy, you need to move. I don't know where to, maybe up New York State where you can have guns or whatever, but it's just like, this is a real survival thing. And people don't, people them don't realize that we're in a war and it's like, our, our young black men are told to do more with their dicks before they're told to do anything with their guns. So all we do, and I have been a young black man, so I understand, all we do is focus on which girl we can hit where. And meanwhile, European, young Europeans are out going... Learning going, how to shoot. <laughs> Europeans are going hunting. They're hitting I'm target. Gun. Right. So it's like I just seen in Georgia... The, the Black Panthers going down there, open and carry, uh, marching and saying, well, you know, if if I was jogging out and I had my gun with me, ain't nobody going to come and run mm -hmm. down out. Then you have the whole bullshit Yankee framework around, well, was he breaking into houses? Wasn't he breaking into... I don't care if he was breaking into houses. The boy shouldn't have got shot. That's it. And it's all of the thugs them or the people them act like thugs say yo well i will bust on a on a on a brother if he does this i will bust on a da 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 da, da. but as soon as they see the police come them drop them weapon and run <laughs> well <laughs> well it's not good enough everybody's too scared of death and i don't understand why because we come from a people who for instance the Ibo landing where there were 76 people that all walked into the marshes. I think it was in Georgia or in Virginia. And they drowned themselves when they come off the ship from Nigeria because they said we'd rather drown than be, spend a life in bondage because we were people that believed in transmigration of the soul. So rather than go into slavery, they were just like, you know, when I read this story, I cried. I cried because... I would have hoped that I would have enough courage to do that because, you know, we've been raised to believe that killing yourself is a, a dirty or a foul actor is committing a crime. But the Igbo people believed, and these are warrior people, they believed that if things aren't right in this life, it's okay because you can't come back and have a next life. So they, they took over the ship. They was enslaved. They took over the ship, and as it gets to, um, I think it was Virginia or Georgia, it's called the Ibo Landing. As it gets there, they kill the slave master, they kill all of the, the ship crew, but they're still in, in shackle. And 
now they, 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 the ship has docked and they're running out of food. So they have to come off the ship. All of the white people, all of the plantation owners and whatever, the police are there waiting with their guns trained on them to take them off the ship and put them to work on the plantation because every one of them w was paid for with $100. And back in this, uh, sorry, every one of them cost about $100. And back in the 18th century, $100 was a lot of money. See, someone saying Savannah, uh, Georgia. Every one of them was, was worth $100. Right, so they don't, they're not just going to kill them for the insubordination. They might kill one or two of them, but they're going to put them to work on the plantation. Under under direction of the chief, they march off the ship. Seventy six of them, youths, women as well, bonded, in still in shackles. They march off the ship, singing, and then under direction of the chief, they march into the swamp and all drown themselves. That is the next discovery type of self-belief in your ancestors meanwhile now is our people are, are too scared to 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 publicly comment on celebrities when they want to come out and coon <laughs> you can't say that you can't say that that's not good what do you mean it's not good that's why i like people like boosie because they just say what what needs to be said mm -hmm. or they just say in your mind whereas now it's like you can't. There's certain celebrities who have asked me, they want to be part of my business, they want to uh, do something with me, and I just say no, and don't even ask me again, because I'll put you on blast, because of until you fix out your life. And people are scared to call people out. Why? These people, if they're part of your community, really, then they're accountable to you. So call them out, and you're accountable to them, and wait to get called out if you do fuckery. And if you right. don't, then we can all meet in the right place. It's like, there's, there's certain people who ask me, oh, you know, can you do this with um, Kim Kardashian? Oh, can you do this with, um, who is the other person now? Somebody big famous, I can't remember. And I was just like, no. Do, do you know who, like, you know, I was just like, my integrity is worth more than your money. And that's where we need to get to where oh, it's just yes. let's talk about that like it's priceless because as soon as we start to sell our power we can't get it back right. that's when we culture it's like look at how many rastas around the world right now are allowing anybody to come and take the red gold and green anybody Stop it, please. Run up my blood pressure right now please <laughs> Look, I just had this conversation like two weeks ago. Please don't even touch on this right now. I'm having a good night. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, so what? Some Yankee is going to come to Jamaica or something and they're going to offer you a little small piece of money and you're going to start doing all kind of coon show for them. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Come, yeah, man. You're my brethren. Yeah, me, I got to take you up. Yes, sir. I'm going to take you down. Yes, sir. Video me. I'm a singer. I'm a this, I'm a that. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, and people are hungry. But at the same time, what are you feeding them? Don't feed them junk. I must stay quiet on that one. And, and I figure that actually, until we have a collective unity, because the other thing is this, and this is a secret, that's not a secret, because I'll just tell you, I have not paid anybody for marketing for my fruit, not once, not yet. And I don't plan to. You know why? Because my fruit company is not my fruit company. My fruit company is a fruit company of the children. And everybody, whether they are coon or whether they are pro-black, they want to be deeper connected to Africa. And they want to be part of something bigger than themselves. They want to give back. Their give back is framed within the UNESCO, UNICEF, Red Cross bullshit. Give out some mass and give out some food for one day and then go back to your life, which is of destruction. And so I have all of these people who politic with me, reason with me, and they look to me for guidance and direction. And I'm like, well, I can give you some nourishment. You promote the nourishment. We're going to sell more and then we're going to give more to the youth then. So it's like in the last month we must have done three sales those sales 
uh, they, they topped a quarter of a million dollars. And um, that's just the sales. That's not the rest of the month. And uh, out of that quarter of a million dollars, 20% of that is going to go forward to the kids, but I'm making it so that the business is going to be 50% owned by the youths. So I don't have to pay for marketing because there's a mission behind my... And it's the same thing for anybody who has a business. If you connect that to a social... A cause, a, a purpose. Some kind of social purpose, then people will... Of course, they'll come and promote it for free. Whereas if you're that just telling good, them... That is a good business gem right there that you just, you just said. It's really simple as well. Because look at what the big charities them do. Get millions, billions of don donations each year. And how they manage it, because they say, well, we're doing this cause. In so here you have, literally, in, for, for instance, in Ethiopia, just in Ethiopia, right? There's 5,000 different charities, right? So here you have this, it's basically neo-colonialism, because most of the charities, them, um, they, they get buildings, they get land, they employ people for the benefit of Europeans, generally speaking. That's what most of the charities them. There's not a whole heap of Chinese opening charities in Africa. They're just doing business. Whereas there's a European them who's opening charities. Look at Haiti and, and uh, Goma in Congo, the charity capitals of the world. You have these people who are having these charities, which are just fronts for intelligence agencies like the CIA and MI6. But yet they're getting billions each year in donations from people who want to do good. And really the good isn't even get to the people. So how is it they create a whole system where they can go to Africa and, and they can take money from somebody who's in, in the subway in New right. York or on the sidewalk in, mm -hmm. in Georgia and say, we're going to go help feed a, a starving African child. Meanwhile, can you hear me? Yes, yes. You can hear me? I, I don't can work. hear you. I'm hearing you. Hmm. Uh oh. Oh my lord. Babylon is doing this to us again. Oh, okay. Let's see if we can get Shaka back on. That is so strange. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can get him back on. Is Hello? Is, is, you have to keep your phone in one place, you know. Rest it up on the side. Really? Hold on. Yeah. Let me it's just that I don't want my battery to die. So, okay, I'm going to just keep it here. Okay, great. Um, so, is, is all of these people have made an industry out of poverty, and they call it the poverty industry. And we need to get rid of charities. Africans don't need it. They need trade. In Jamaica, we don't need aid. We need trade. In, yeah. in Brazil, we don't need aid. We need trade. So if we start connecting our businesses to missions, which are based on making sure that these people can own equity, can have healthcare plans, and also are able to be educated so that they can eventually own and run the businesses, then we won't need any help from anybody else. Like the African-American economy is a trillion dollar annual economy that's just one of them right the same with brazil the same with um the 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 black british is a multi-billion dollar annual economy and where do we spend it we spend it in the sports stores we spend it on streaming and sharing we spend it on the contract phones we spend it on going to the uh the mall and going to the cinema and going to the concert. We spend all of our money, not with our community. We can spend it with our community. We choose not to. So when uh, you see, you ever see killer Mike trigger warning. Right. And you see when he tried to live black for two weeks or something, and he ended up starving because he was trying to get black, f f black food from a black farmer, black owned restaurant, black ganja, everything he was trying to get black. And it was very difficult for him to do. But it's like what I say to people when I tell them, say, yo, you need to, if you can, you need to move to Africa. You, you need to move to where everything is black and try and influence that. Because from the 1970, 
until 1990, the Chinese diaspora provided 25.6 billion to the rebuilding of China. In 1950, if you remember, there was an expression that would say, you don't have a Chinaman's chance because Chinese people were the bottom of the bottom. Everybody in that, in that country was poor. Everybody, because they were communists. They were all poor together. You have like some of the royal family then who were who was rich. Now you have over 200 billionaires in Chinese, um, uh, like the equivalent of Chinese Congress, right? And that happened because the Chinese diaspora, they made, like the Chinese people know where all of their Chinese people are because they say, all right, you can go forward to wherever and we'll give right. you a loan. And you, can, you can make business in that, in that column or wherever and you want to send that money back to China. We're going to use that for development. And now, all of a sudden, China is owned in the world. It's not like there's not a billion in the diaspora. Big in the Caribbean. Big in the Caribbean. And when you see who's doing the work, it's their mm. own that came from China. It's like mm. Chinese laborers. Mm. We can do that as well, though. It's like, it's, it's a plan that I am formulating. Formulating, I, I'll be part of the initiative to... He can make Ghana economically prosper by connecting it to the whole of Caribbean and the whole of uh, North America, Brazil, so that we don't ever have to go via North America or go, go via England or Europe again. And we can just go from Africa to the black Americas. That's it. Back and forward. Yes. Yes. Back that link. That is true collectivism. Right. But... I figure that actually, and that's what I was saying to kind of bring it back to the original point, is that when you start looking at the experience as our experience and not just your experience or my experience, right. then you think in terms of a vision or a blueprint or a black print that is one that is entirely cyclical. So like I'm just about to buy a farm, right? I'm about to buy a 15, a 15 acre farm. And that means that I will be able to have 20% of all of the fruit that I send out to people from, from the tree to the doorstep. I own that whole chain. The only other thing I've got to do is start a logistics company, right? But then that means that when they want to lock off the world or whatever, whatever they might do, I know that they can't lock me off because I own the farm. I own the 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 supply chain from end to end. I own the logistics company, and I own um, the distribution center, packing house, and and yes. and then I have a personal relationship with my customer, and I own the data as well because that's very important. Rather than just be like, yeah, man, I'm gonna put you onto some game, buy some stocks from Wall Street, <laughs> and then that doesn't make no sense. Now we're talking. That makes a lot of sense. And I like that you kind of connected that to the earlier point of um, the, okay, not that you are saying to forget the individual experience of your country, but just to think beyond your experience in your country. So that mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. That, that does make a lot of sense, especially when it comes to business-wise of having our own on every level and having that connection on every level mm. around the globe. And, I and that. Also, we can't be scared to do business with each other. Like every single right. time that business and it's doing well or somebody has a good idea, I'm like, yo, do you need money? Like, what do you need to grow? How can I partner with you? Et cetera, et cetera. The mm -hmm. problem is a lot of black businesses is that people make them entirely about themselves, which right. works agree to kind of get it off the ground but then to get it into s supermarkets or superstores to get it into having a big investor you need to be needs to be removed from you it can't be about you no more it's like sometimes i'll post things on, on the fruits and roots page that have me in it usually with my niece or something but m a lot of people are on that page they don't know that i'm even involved in a company they don't know it's my company that's good because you don't know who, who, you don't know the Walmart family, the Walmart. Right. And you don't need, and you don't care to know. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> the consumer. Right, exactly. But the problem, I think, is a lot of black people who make a black business, they, they want to act like they're the black Moses and they come to save everybody. And because they're employing a couple people, you know, now they're the saviors of earth and, you know, they're just out here fighting the system. And it's like, stop fighting the system because you give power to the system by fighting it. Build your own system and stop complaining. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Uh, or cuss them and strap them up, but don't be like, you know, oh, you know, we can't do anything because of the white man. Because, you know, it's not the white man that's killing everybody in, 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 in Kingston or killing everybody in Chicago. You understand? It's like we have to take some responsibility and some accountability for our own things as well. And I agree. That that's why I, I personally cannot wait to be situated in Africa permanently, which will be soon. From the West into the continent. Because there's a lot of people who, like you say, they're waiting for the invite. They're scared. They, they don't know. They're kind of looking. And as soon as they see a familiar face or something there, and they can see that they can get some land or get a job, then they'll go. There's already people moving. In 2019, there was an extra million tourist visas issued by the government of Ghana. And predominantly, over 50% of those were African-Americans. Over 50% of those. So that means that there was at least half a million African-Americans that entered us to Ghana for the first time. At least. Whether they were on holiday, it's like, that needs to be more. That needs to be Jamaicans, that needs to be Dominicans, that needs to be Brazilians, that needs to be, you know, black British. Although I'm lucky that I, though I was born in Barbados, I was raised in the UK because I have a different kind of experience and I have a, a, a greater capacity because of my proximity to the Caribbean and to Africa. I, Africa there, you know, it was all of these Nigerians, all of these Ghanaians, everybody's coming to London. And, and I'm, I'm able to experience that and be like, yeah, man, all right, Africa's just there. Whereas in North America, it's like, so you're black. Yeah. All right. So where are you from? I don't know. But what do you mean? Yeah, 10 generations I've been here. Whereas in the Caribbean, they killed so many of us so regularly because sugarcane plantation work was so hard that they weren't able to breed us because our women weren't able to get their menstrual cycle because of the, the how bad they were treated and how bad they ate so they would just work them to death and then go back and get more and that's why in at the end of slavery mm. in 1834 when slavery was abolished though there was an extra six years of apprenticeship so 1840 let's say a lot of the people who was in jamaica who was in um uh, cuba etc at the time had only come to the island 10 or 15 years before because once you got onto a plantation, your average life expectancy was four years. That was it. So you would be taken from Nigeria as an 18-year-old. You, you make the middle passage, you get to the plantation, and you're dying at 24. And then they're going back and getting more, you know. So oh, That one is an interesting one. I have to um, look that up. That would yeah. make sense when it comes to proximity of... Caribbean to Africa versus elsewhere to Africa. Okay. Um, there's a lecture by a woman called uh, Dr. Joy de Grey Leary. It's called Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. You can just put it into YouTube and she explains that, like the chronological history and the, 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 the um, just the yeah, practical. Right. It's a really, really good lecture. It was, it was her. It was. Yes, yeah, she wrote she wrote a few books as well. Just Google Dr. Okay. Joy Leary because when she starts one of the things that went viral when it got posted on on the internet was it, out of that same lecture a video of her saying I could hate white people until I'm blue in the face. Hate white people, but it's not going to stop them from getting the job. It's not going to stop them from getting a loan. It's not going to get them killed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And she was just explaining about there's no such thing as reverse racism she's a a real amazing woman well yes <laughs> okay i feel like i've read that book in college i feel like i have 
Yeah, but then it's really good shot. It's for us Caribbean. Yeah, I've I've actually got to jump off because I need to go work out. I think, but it's for us Caribbean people who do have that capacity to educate African American, to educate uh, Afro Brazilians, to educate people who don't have the same Pan African background and experience. Because if you look at like the leaders in North America or the the leaders of of the the, the national heroes in in North America, there's Harriet Tubman, right? But we have Nani of the Maroons. Nani, well, she was Ghanaian. There was no, you know, 10 generations or whatever. She literally was a princess who came from Ghana, a queen who came from Ghana, straight. And that was her first experience. We have Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey started the Black Star Line and was going to and from Africa. That was where he was at. They have Martin Luther King. So there's like, you know, we... Our, our leaders or our heroes have usually a greater connection to Africa than their leaders and their heroes because of the, what I explained to you. But um, yeah, man said Bossa from Barrios. Also, the Black um, American experience was a slightly different as well. I always said they had it harder yeah. than Caribbean people, but that's another story we will talk about. <laughs> But uh, it was nice chatting with you, Shaka. I'm going to drink my water. Yeah, man. Next week, I'm going to get you on night. some. Yeah, man. Peace. You're going to get one. Oh. Okay, I'll text him and, and figure out what to get. Okay, guys. I'm going to go. I'm going to save this live if anybody wants to come back and check it out. But yes, you guys, check out Shaka Bars. He is amazing. He does a lot of work in our communities. And um, yeah, I'm going to go on my bed. Have a good night, guys. <laughs> I see somebody's comment. I think all of us have something to teach all of us, okay? Black Americans have something to teach. Me as a Caribbean person, Caribbean people have something that I could teach, an African and African could teach. I think we all have something to share because our experiences are unique, although we, you know, are one people, right? So I don't want it to, I don't think that's what he was saying that, oh, hey, you know, I'm superior and I'm going to teach you this. I don't think that's what he was saying at all. So, me have to clarify that before you come for me and come for Shaka. All right, guys, have a good night.